Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. Thanks for joining me today as I cover the 2001 comedy American Pie, the sequel to the movie about the guy who loved apple pie a little too much. As usual, caress that like button, drop a comment, and of course subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the breakdown. And, as a disclaimer, this video includes my own personal commentary and analysis. It's not a substitute for the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Alright, let's do it. Today's film starts on the last day at a typical American college campus, with some girl trying to get Jim to go all the way with her. But he's too fresh and too nervous, while his mom and dad are pulling up as hopefully Jim is pulling out. His dad seems to have a penchant for walking in at exactly the wrong time, followed by his mom, and then it seems things somehow get worse when the girl's parents walk in too. A mismatch made in heaven. Nothing seems to have changed much with Stifler and Oz either. As Stifler walks Oz into class taking a good look up at innocent girl's skirts, turns out that Oz and Heather are still dating, and Kevin still seems pretty much the same. When Jim returns home to his old childhood bedroom, his dad returns to his old antics of making Jim uncomfortable with inappropriate stories about mom. Later, the group meets up in the same diner that they used to, with cultured Finch, who is still obsessed with Stifler's mom, honestly, who wouldn't be? And then we bounce to a house party with Stifler himself. Even Sherman is there. And everyone still remembers the internet incident of Jim finishing a little too quickly with Nadia. As Oz is saying goodbye to his sweetheart Heather, Kevin, Vicky, and Jessica are reuniting back at Stifler's party. But Kevin is learning that a lot has changed between him and Vicky, because she obviously has zero interest in him. And as you might find me doing, Finch has wandered off in search of Stifler's mom. Stifler finds him and chases him down, but Karma will get the best of him when he thinks a bunny is pouring champagne over his head. And it's really just some dude taking a leak off the balcony upstairs. The party ends pretty quickly when the cops arrive, and Kevin receives a rude awakening from his older brother that Kevin's summer is only going to get more weird. And he shares some age-old advice that he should treat each day like it's prom and then end the summer with a massive blowout. Later, Jim gets a call from Nadia in New York, who informs him that she's coming home to see him at the end of the summer. Of course, she includes some serious innuendos about burying the bone. And Jimbo doesn't really look too prepared. But Kevin announces that they're all going to rent a house on the lake, and there's destined to be all kinds of bunnies for Jim to practice with. So they pack up the car, and in order to afford the place, they have to invite Stifler along. Arriving at the beach house on Lake Michigan, it's obvious that the place is definitely going to help them score but they're gonna need a summer job to help pay for it. The rent, I mean, not the scoring, oh my god. And while Finch is preparing his tantric energies, Jim heads off in search of Michelle at band camp, hoping that she can help with a little feedback on his previous endeavor. And she offers to provide him with some constructive criticism because he was actually that terrible. Yikes. Jim is easily startled though, and he almost knocks himself out on a giant dinner bell when band camp staff find him. I guess he's dazed, which is why he allows himself to get dragged out on stage where everyone expects a performance from him. It's gotta be the short shorts that has everyone convinced he belongs there. But I have no idea why he proceeds to commit some atrocities with a trombone, and then surprisingly receives a round of applause. I think the implication here is that Jim is talented and special in so many ways that he deserves the applause. Anyway, back at their summer job, Jim is mourning his total lack of ability to do anything with style and his need to improve on that before Nadia arrives. But Kevin guarantees that he'll have lots of opportunities to practice. All they'll have to do is put a keg on the deck and the honeys will come flocking. However, it seems like the only girls who show up are Vicky and Jessica. So Stifler intentionally tosses a football directly into a group of girls, sending Oz diving into the middle and securing some females to balance out their sausage fest of a party. The next day, however, both Kevin and Vicky are rehashing bits of their conversation from last night, separately to their individual friends. Ironically, both parties are talking about the same rule of three, where one triples the amount that their partner claims to have been with to arrive at the truth. 
I always thought this elusive rule of three was the number of innuendos you can slip into casual conversation before you have to outright ask for what you want. Alright, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. Now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. Anyway, while Finch counters Stifler's teasing by bragging about practicing Tantra and saving it all up for one glorious moment, Oz calls his girl Heather, who's staying in Spain. She wants to explore exploits of the verbal kind. Although Oz is feeling awkward, he feels more obliged to do whatever he can to satisfy his girl. That is, until Stifler starts listening in on the other phone line. While the guys are painting the exterior of the frat house, Stifler waits for the perfect opportunity to enter, after the last girls have left. When he goes through their stuff, he finds a silicone Johnson and starts running around the house with it. Until Kevin radios them on the walkie-talkies and warns the guys that the girls have returned. But they don't have quite enough time to put the item back or to get out. So they tried to hide in the closet. Rim shot. And while Stifler and Oz are talking on the walkie-talkies, the radio frequency they're talking on gets picked up by a local fast food place and starts projecting their conversation over the loudspeakers in the restaurant. Now, I don't think that this is how radio frequencies work, but hey, creative liberties, right? Jim is listening to the girls from his hiding spot beneath their bed. When one girl opens her dresser drawer and says something about Johnny West missing. Thinking she must be talking about her silicone Peter, Jim is eager to put it back in the drawer when the girls leave the room. Only to have to duck back into the closet with the guys as the girls return again. And then one of the girls finds the love stick in her drawer and discovers the guys in the closet. When the guys reveal that they think the girls prefer the company of other girls, the ladies decide to mess with the guys, promising to do everything they do, starting with touching each other's backsides, and everyone, even the cops listening in on the radio, encourage the guys to play along. So Stifler grabs a nice handful of Finch's right cheek, and the girls then start playing tonsil hockey. So Stifler and Jim plant a quick lip push on the other, but the girls play it as unsatisfactory and coach the guys to go all out. So after the guys play along, Finch holds the girls to their promise to get it on, and they do, to the delight of everyone listening. But in order to make it to the next level, the girls tell them to give each other tuggies, and that makes the guys leave. Back at the beach house, the guys are sitting around when Stifler walks in and distributes some adult movies and pleasure jelly. Just when Stifler gets a phone call and Finch thinks it's his mom. So he immediately goes to action. And so does Jim, running to band camp to seek out Michelle to help him prepare for Nadia's visit, who does her best to help guide him through being physically close with someone. Mostly, anyway. She seems to have good intentions, up to the point where she sticks a trumpet where the sun don't shine. Thankfully, the camp director starts to enter the room when they hear someone butchering Louis Armstrong, and both Michelle and Jim take off running. But Michelle promises to help him again when she gets home. After a montage of all the guys aspiring to reach their goals, Jim is lying in bed reading Nadia's postcard when he starts to feel inspired. So he pops in one of the dirty videos that Stifler donated earlier. But rather than grabbing the pleasure jelly off the side of the table, he accidentally grabs the tube of crazy glue and fuses his hand to his one-eyed wonder. And then when he panics and tries to hide the evidence, he ends up gluing the VHS to his other hand. Things get worse when he climbs out the bedroom window and the neighbor calls the cops on him. The police show up and take him to the hospital, where poor Jim's junk seems to take the brunt of the damage. So now Jim's worried about not being functional for Nadia, and I mean, if he wasn't circumcised before, ugh. But his good old dad always has his back and talks the doctor into giving him something that'll help his willy heal faster. Anyway, the next morning at the beach house, the guys are teasing Jim when Stifler's little brother shows up, leaving poor Finch devastated because he's convinced Stifler's mom isn't going to show up now. But things are looking good for Oz because his girl Heather will be coming to see him soon. And things are looking real good for Jim when he finds out that Nadia is already there, in his room. 
Correction, things look good for Jim. Definitely not mini Jim, because it hasn't finished healing yet. So he runs to Michelle for help, and she comes up with the plan of telling Nadia that he's dating Michelle, just until he heals though. So then they break up in front of Nadia and make a big display out of it, with Michelle making him sound like one hell of a lay. Then the day of the big party finally arrives and things are looking good. Except that Vicky shows up with her more mature and more handsome date, sending Kevin storming down to the beach, where all the guys follow him to see what's wrong. And the guys sit around complaining about the difficulties of getting over a good woman. Jim doesn't stay long though, because Nadia raises him down to the lighthouse, where they sit beside each other on a small bed. And when Jim starts reminiscing about the past summer without her, he realizes that he has a special bond with Michelle, and he ditches Nadia to go find her. Now Oz may be fooling himself when he tells Vicky he'd rather be her friend than be without her. And Heather surprises Oz, showing up to the party early. Nadia and Sherman end up hitting it off and rush upstairs to get it on. While downstairs, Stifler starts yelling about how far he would go just to get it on with the two hotties from the frat house. And Jim has gone to his own extent to confess his love to Michelle, interrupting her performance on stage to spin her around and lock lips with her in front of the audience. Everyone applauds them, and they take off to spend time together. Back at the party at the beach house, everyone is having a great time, as it seems like everyone has found their place or their partner. Or in Stifler's case, partners. Wrapping the whole summer up as the best summer ever and making a pact to do this every summer, just as Stifler's mom pulls up and he hops in the car with her to head off to enjoy some good old fashioned Jennifer Coolidge compatibility. And so ends our film for today. I've gotten a handful of comments about party memories on some of my recent videos, and I love reading them. There's actually a lot of creative ones that I wasn't expecting. So now I turn to you again. Drop a wild beach or lake house memory in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.